Hey guys, it is August. No, it's not August. It's September 13th, 12th. Must be 12th. I saw a lot of stuff about 9 11, the 20th year anniversary of 9 11 here yesterday and this morning. But it's got to be the 12th. It's Sunday. Uh, we had plans on shutting down. I shouldn't say. Let's back up. Two days ago, we were forecasting we would be done today. About right now. It's not going to happen. We we got a bit of a sprinkle of rain last night. Oh, probably yesterday at about 4 it started. Not a ton, but the 357, the longer season canola, just has... Like it's testing that a little bit higher moisture content. We didn't want to put it in the middle of that bin. So, and we didn't want to move. So we shut down. And, you know, we got some more rain after that. So it was a good, good call to shut down. And told the guys this morning, don't worry about it. You know, we'll, we'll be shut down all day. And me and dad had to get out and do some tinkering. And of course we have to go out, you know, there's still crop to do and we just got that little itch in the back there going, eh, maybe we should go try some. And, you know, tried one field and it was borderline of 357. So we are in the 233. This is the last field. It's running nice. Not the best we've ever had, but we ran out of moisture. So we're not upset at all, actually. We're probably going to be on pace to have a banner year. I did not do a ton of forward contracting because of the talk of drought. I'll be honest, I probably did too much for the amount of talk that was there. Oh well. But I'm we're both going to do really well this year. So I thought I would talk about what's going on here. First of all, we're not going to get done today. I've mentioned that. But if we chew this, most of this up, there's only a hundred acres left here. And it's just me and dad right now. We gave the guys the day off and we didn't really want to call them back for a couple hours at night. You know, so we just said, you know, we'll poke around if we can hammer out 40, 50 acres. That makes for a real short morning here, which is good. If we could do two hours here while the other stuff dries up, that would be great and we'll get moved and we should only have about 160 acres at over by the airport we got one field that's 150 and we got a little like a 10 or 12 acre parcel but it was just a hair on the green side yesterday so we figured we'd let her let her marinate since it's just me and dad out here i figured hey let's talk about the grain cart now, <coughs> one of my my first video ever I did about installing the load cells in that. It was horrible cameramanship. I think I'm getting a little bit better. Probably not a whole lot better. I have gotten away from holding everything vertical. I, I, I like this. It's just harder on my hands to do. It's a little more awkward, but whatever. So the grain cart is uh, Brent 882. I think it, it's 850 bushel. I think it's just the way the everything works out. Depending on how high we heap it up and how much things weigh, we have had like 890, 900. I think the most I ever saw was like 902, but we had that thing way heaped up in teeth. And, you know, it's enough. It's just enough for us. Now that we have a semi and <coughs> we are I'm in the process of slowly turning the farm over to get away from using tandems there's about five or six things that we need to touch on first or we touch on address and change first to get away from tandems and into hauling with like semi tritums so that I think we can be a lot more efficient 
and I, you know I want a central bin yard instead of you know four or five little ones and I want to get away from the grain bags as much as possible that kind of stuff so I think soon I don't know if it's gonna be this year I we don't necessarily need to but I would like to upgrade that to a 1350 bushel cart because that's about the legal amount we can get on our tritum of canola which is the lightest not the lightest but one of the lighter ones that we'll ever use so the idea is you can fill the grain cart and then fill a sample so you've got that extra capacity I'm not saying we can't do it with this i'm saying we could do it better but part two of the grain cart is the tractor now one again i think it was my second video or maybe even my third i don't know somewhere i did a video on the 610 delta track which i really like as a tractor like it's not a perfect tractor but it's a damn good one but it is way overkill for this cart it is in fact way overkill honestly for probably a 1300 bushel cart so dad and i are we're thinking that we're kind of going through the cost of everything and we're it's really expensive hours to have this delta track running and a lot of the hours that are on it are just idle hours when it's running the grain cart. So we're thinking that this year we're probably going to upgrade the 2375, which we use on the, the land roller, the disc. It's just enough for the, the disc we have. Um, the Harrows, that kind of stuff. We'd like to upgrade that. Now, we're having two clashing arguments. I, I shouldn't say arguments, discussions. To me, an argument is very emotional, very personal, feelings get hurt. We just talk about it, you know. We, you know I think this, okay. You, know, you try and convince me, I try and convince you. Nobody's voice gets raised or feelings get hurt. putting out his auger kit. But I would like to get now I, I really like those I would like to actually get a smaller tractor. Now we're both in agreement that this is not an ideal setup for us. It's a great setup. It's but it's way overkill and shoes falling apart. I uh, better boot her up there. I don't think he'll make it. So both of us think that the 610 Delta Track is way overkill for the cart. I even think that it's way overkill, unless it's a wet year, I should say that. Throw that caveat in there. But I think it's overkill even for a 1350 bushel cart or a 1500. Those 2000s, I think you need a 610 or you know, 570 or better. Now, what I would like to do so I want a fixed frame tractor, but they're a bit pricey too. Like I, I'm looking, say, a Fent, and the reason I want one of those is, is you can use them for a lot more things. Like they're high speed, they ride nicer, and I want to be able to use it on the grain cart, on the harrows, on this, that, the other. But also I want to pull a floater, a pull type fertilizer applicator around or uh, spin spread or stuff stuff like that so now that's probably what I want for horsepower is probably too much or I shouldn't say too much but more than enough for that what I th I would expect we will end up doing is we'll trade off the 2375 on a tract like a slightly older tract like a quad track or another delta track or whatever let's talk about what i want as a grain cart tractor number one is a pto uh, 
Uh, we ran two tractors on this grain cart before both the PTO. PTO is a game changer. It makes it twice the cart. Number two, power shift or CVT. Uh, the, fe the power shift is great when you're trying to, especially if you're having to come up from behind to catch up and then slow down to match the combine speed. So a lot of times you're going from 12 mile an hour down to three and a half. And with a quad range where you've got A, B, C, D, or yeah, so we had a quad range in the 8770 and a tri range in the, so a low, medium, high with four gears in each. Uh, they're, they're both 12 speed transmissions, I should mention. The quad range had three gears and a reverse in each, and it had A, B, C, D. The 2375 has four gears in each range, but it's got low, medium, high, and reverse. So they're, they're both 12 speed. The big thing is if you're trying to play catch up, you need to stop to change your gear or your range and then start up again. It's really clunky. So power shift or a CVT transmission is a must. And for me, I prefer tracks, but like I said, LSWs would be really nice too because they're not as wide as a set of duals. I like to have the extra room for the headers to come out because I just, I don't think we need the massively large stance and they store up nicer inside. So those are the three big ones. And number four is at least 400 horsepower, 400 to 450. Uh, I'm not saying if we didn't have the right price, we'd go 500, but it is what it is. So hopefully next year we have a different setup for this. But all that is aside from the fact that I wanted to talk about our current setup. Now let's take a look around the cab. I've shown you the Delta Track cab in the video. Some things have been rejigged since, but not much. So the GPS, we actually did that on purpose. We tilted it down just because we wanted to be able to see that mirror a little better. And we don't use the GPS. Having said that, next year, I, I have the uh, climate field view set up for it. I think, again, it depends on what cart is gonna be driving it etc or sorry what tractor is going to be pulling the cart but i think i'm going to run remote view another ipad on it so that there's a couple quarters where or pieces of land where it's really nice to have and be able to see what everybody's doing and where it's yielding heavy and if we have a cart driver that's unfamiliar you get to know where the bushes are and maybe there's a rock pile to look out for uh, we have some spots where there's known rocks in the ground. I have uh, pins dropped. Anyhow, this thing always flickers when it's on camera. I, I just can't get the frame rate right. Uh, so we have the Libra cart system, and I absolutely love that. It, it's an awesome system. And then I have my camera, and I have... We, that's unplugged, so it, well, it's still plugged in, but it's not plugged into the cart or, at all because that only plugs into the cedar. So, and we got radio, PTO, you know, all the fun stuff. So, I'm hoping our next tractor has GPS built into this computer and we could do like an RTX unlock because I plan on having everything on RTX next year. It seems to work really well uh, to have that extra repeatability and where it's really gonna pay off I think is in fungicide when we're doing multiple passes. So maybe you do your fungicide pass and then you can fall, do your same trample lines for desiccation or pre-harvest so you're not tramping more. This is a must. I absolutely love this Libra card system. It allows us to look at, say, whatever fields you want and how they're yielding. 
we can look at what we have stored where. For example, we've got a bunch of bags. I've got, I know exactly what's in each one within like less than 2% error, which is fantastic. So that's a must. That's a must. I love having the camera. Gotta have a radio. We'll see. There's dad going there. He's augering away. Here's, here's the caveat is for us to pick, we can't pick a tractor that's just gonna be a green car. I really don't like, you know, okay, there's some equipment you have that you pretty much have to have that's single use, but it goes on every single acre and it gets a lot of use, i.e. combines. You can't really call a sprayer single use because you can actually use it to uh, apply liquid fertilizer and it goes on every acre like five times a year. Um, but tractors in particular, I don't like having a tractor dedicated to run for a few hundred hours a year on one piece of equipment and then sit there the rest of the year. Which, I know it sounds stupid what I'm saying, I want, when I'm saying I want to get the Delta Track off of this, which I do, I want to have the Delta Track freed up to pull the disc. It does a much better job, it's got way more horsepower to pull the disc. That's not saying I don't want the new tractor to be not able to pull the disc, which again means 400 now. I would like, you know, those JCB Fast Tracks, they're pretty cool, our neighbors have one of those, or two of those. I just don't think it's enough horsepower to pull the disc. Having said that, and the reason I, I want to be able to pull the disc is sometimes in the spring we have to go clean up ruts or disc down something and we don't want to have to unhook the delta track from the cedar. Now, any other time of the year it's fine because the Delta track would essentially be sitting anyways, and the 330 could pull the screen cart or even a, it, probably a 1350 would be the upper max, but you know, you're trying to figure out what you want and how much you need, because we need to replace that tractor with that or better. So we need 375 horsepower, but more. Like I said, 425 is probably the minimum, I would like a CVT transmission. I would like a smaller tractor. Uh, this, they're a lot better on fuel. They're a lot better to drive. If we're gonna be floating, you can go hot and faster, cover a lot more acres in a day. You can go back and forth from the farmyard. You can, and it opens up a lot more options. I will have a fast tractor at some point, whether it's a fast track or a Fent or uh, Claus has some really cool ones. Um, Ultra's got some awesome ones, but they're not over in Canada. Uh, even, you know, Case and John Deere and everybody's got CVTs. It's just, I, I kind of like the Euro ones a little better. And, but price matters, availability matters. You know, there's not much available right now. So, who knows? 